right now on NBC 26 Live at 10. Dozens gather in Appleton for a candlelight vigil honoring the lives lost in Charlottesville yesterday. Plus, more from the Charlottesville community just a day after the violence from the rally. And a group of women in the Fox City show you how to defend yourself if attacked while going for a run. Those stories and much more, but this just sent out of Kenosha County. One person is dead and two others have been shot in an altercation earlier tonight at the Great Lakes Dragway. Kenosha County Sheriff David Beth said the altercation was between rival gangs from Milwaukee and Chicago and they've caused problems in the past. NBC 26 will keep you updated as the story progresses. And thank you for joining us on this Sunday evening. I'm Mo Hyder in for Regina on. Emotions continue to run high in Charlottesville, Fort Virginia tonight, just a day after a rally turned deadly. Jay Gray has the latest report from Charlottesville, and we must warn you, some of the video that you're about to see may be disturbing. There is an uneasy tension here. Boiling over this afternoon as counter protesters. Shouted down, then eventually forced out a Unite the Right organizer trying to talk to the media. It is the latest in what has been 24 hours of chaos and carnage in Charlottesville. After police say 20-year-old James Alex Fields Jr. used his car as a weapon, plowing into a crowd of people protesting a gathering of alt-right, white nationalist and neo-Nazis who had gathered to oppose the removal of a Robert E. Lee statue. 32-year-old Heather Heyer died in the attack. 19 were injured. Brennan Gilmore shot this video as the horror unfolded in front of him. He targeted this crowd very clearly. There's no question of anyone who witnessed it uh, that his intent was to cause uh, a mass casualty incident. Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe agrees. To the white supremacists and the neo-Nazis who came to our beautiful state yesterday, there is no place for you here in Charlottesville. There is no place for you in Virginia, and there is no place for you in the United States of America. McAuliffe began his Sunday like so many here, searching for help and healing. Let us use hope. Let us use today to reach out to our fellow citizens. Put your hand out to help them. Let us show these people that we are bigger than them. We are stronger than them. A difficult task in a city still on edge tonight. Jay Gray, NBC News, Charlottesville, Virginia. The suspect in the attack is being held without bail. He'll be arraigned on charges, including second degree murder tomorrow. And back here at home, people gathering in Appleton showing their support for the victims of violence in Charlottesville. About 200 people gathered at City Park to spread that message. Many brought candles and told personal stories of how violence has affected them through the night. Some called for an end to racism. Others asked for more support from the government. But most agreed that nothing would happen or get done unless everyone gets on the same page. We have a tendency right now to be looking into our computers alone at home and so I think sometimes when something like this happens it's really important for people to see other people and know who else in their community feels similarly than that they do. You know we have people every day in Appleton community that um, get called racial slurs, anti-gay slurs and people think that Charlotte is you know that that's Charlotte that's an issue but we have racism you know and anti you know homophobia and transphobia here in Appleton too happening on the daily on a daily basis. Now many people attending state tonight's turnout shows people's passion stopping the violence. Well, we were fortunate to enjoy some nice weather this weekend, but is it all going to come to an end soon? Meteorologist Matt Hoffman has an answer for us. Matt. Yeah, Mo, we are going to see some changes as we head into the work week. It's going to stay dry, though, overnight. Right now we're at 63 degrees in Green Bay. Temperatures around the region generally in the lower 60s will drop into the middle to upper 50s for overnight lows. But off to the west, notice scattered showers and a few thunderstorms in Minnesota. That activity is heading our direction, so have that umbrella handy. Tomorrow we'll see scattered storms, especially by the middle of the day through the afternoon. Highs will be in the 70s. We'll talk more about those rain chances for tomorrow and more rain chances this week coming up. All right, thanks, Matt. A group of moms in the Fox Cities is putting their safety in their own hands. Several of them say they've been put in rough situations while running on the Fox River Trail recently. Now they're spending the day learning self-defense and creating awareness. Shane Gustafson has a story. 
knowing how to take on an attacker, maybe where to focus on, what to say, how to scream. Um, I think that's going to be important. About 30 members of the group Moms Run This Town in the Fox Cities are hitting hard Sunday. Several say they've experienced uncomfortable situations while running on the Fox River Trail. Now they're ready to fight back. Being able to defend ourselves and those that are around us or that we love are important. The women spent the morning inside Championship Martial Arts in Appleton taking the free class. Go ahead, clap, pull, twist, go. Boom, nice. Now freeze. They learned the basics of self-defense and practiced those skills several times with real partners. The hope, of course, is never using them in real life. When you can walk with confidence and you can walk around the area and, and you feel good about yourself, number one, you're really eliminate yourself as a target because the bad guy doesn't want to go after the person who looks confident. And anybody can become a victim. Even though statistics show that most violent attacks happen to women, instructors here in Appleton say it's an important skill for men to learn also. You know, it's like learning to swim. I mean, everyone learns how to swim, right? Everyone's got a smoke detector for their house. So, you know, you don't throw some in the water and say, hey, you know, hopefully you can swim, right? We teach them how to swim first. Now these women say they feel more confident about hitting the trail again soon. I know they'll be able to take what they learned today and bring it to the other moms. Keeping you connected, Shane Gustafson, NBC 26. Now the group says it encourages everybody to take a self-defense class at some point and says raising awareness is one of the best ways to cut down on possible attacks in the community. Now four people went to the hospital after a gas leak in the Bay Lake uh, City Center in downtown Green Bay earlier today. The Green Bay Metro Fire says they were called about a gas smell around 11 at 301 North Adams Street. The fire department says meters didn't show any explosive levels. Seven employees were evaluated for a headache and nausea. The fire department says a pilot light and cocoa sushi bar and the light went out causing the gas to leak into the building. The Calumet County Sheriff's Department says they received a report of a fatal car crash around 2 this morning. When they arrived at the scene on the Highway 151 in the area of Geyser Road in the town of Charlestown, they found an eastbound car had left the road and hit a tree. The driver, a 26-year-old male from the, town, the city of Kiel, was pronounced dead at the scene. He was the only person in the car at the time of the crash. And today marks the one year anniversary of unrest that sparked after a Milwaukee police officer shot and killed Sybil Smith. That happened about 930 that night with the first fire at the BP gas station. The unrest had sparked burning buildings, looting and police in full gear. A police captain of District 7 responsible for much of the Sherman Park neighborhood says everyone has learned something from last year. You know, I don't think so much the kids have gone anywhere. I just think that there's a different message out there. And I think the message is, you know, this is not the way to settle things. And the number of Friday one calls to police in Sherman Park is down from May 26, August 1st. Urgent calls for help are down 46 percent. Fighting calls dropped from 17 last summer to eight this year. Battery calls down from six to two. A liquor store in downtown Appleton celebrates its grand reopening today with what owners call record crowds. Flanagan's stop and shop closed back in June after a severe storm caused roof damage. The owner says it ruined about $800,000 worth of merchandise. Today, the long lines fill the store as customers welcomed it back to town and took advantage of cheap liquor prices. There was 175 people in line standing outside at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. We waited until 9 o'clock till the mayor did a ribbon cutting for us, and then the flood started. And Flanagan says he hopes most of his previous customers come back to the store. He says construction will continue for the next two months, but he's opened up for business. Wisconsin cranberry growers are expected to continue leading the nation in cranberry production this fall. Projections released by the U.S. Department of Agriculture on Thursday say Wisconsin is expected to harvest an estimated 5.6 million barrels of cranberries. That projection is part of the approximately 9 million barrels of cranberries expected nationwide. And still ahead on NBC 26 Live at 10, it's a special celebration for many Wisconsin families. See what their Sunday was all about. But first, what's the weather looking like for the rest of the weekend? Your forecast up next. And now, your Storm Shield forecast with NBC26 meteorologist Matt Hoffman. It was a quiet weekend across northeast Wisconsin. A quiet night tonight as well. 63 degrees currently in Green Bay. South breeze at 7 miles per hour. But we have rain and storm chances 
in the forecast as we start the work week tomorrow. Here's a look at temperatures around the region. We are sitting in the lower 60s for most. 61 in Clintonville, 64 in Kiwani, and 61 degrees right now in Oshkosh. Winds fairly light. Many areas reporting a calm wind this hour. Here's a look at the satellite and radar picture. Pretty quiet conditions, just partly cloudy skies, and we are staying dry. But off to the west, there is a storm system, and that's what's going to bring us the chance for scattered showers and storms, especially by the middle of the day and then on through the afternoon. But your morning commute should be dry. High pressure shifting away, so that's going to make things pretty active for tomorrow. But then we get a bit of a break in Tuesday before more rain chances as we head into later Wednesday. Here's a look at Tropical Storm Gert. It's uh, now up to 45 miles per hour as far as max winds. It should become a hurricane, though, as we head towards later on Tuesday. But the good news is this thing will not impact any land areas. Just going to make for some rough waters and big waves along the East Coast as we go through the week. Closer to home, our weather getting more active as well as we head into tomorrow. It should be dry as you head off to work tomorrow, but then notice the chance for rain and storms as we head through the afternoon, and then things should wrap up as we head through tomorrow night. As far as rainfall amounts go, shouldn't add up to that much. Some areas will pick up less than others, and some areas will pick up more. Depends on where we see some thunderstorms that could put down some heavier rain. Not expecting any severe weather, but you could expect maybe some areas picking up around a quarter of an inch. But then as we head into Wednesday, later Wednesday into Thursday, that is a stronger system, and that has the chance to bring us definitely more in the way of rainfall. So we'll be watching that system closely. But for tonight, 57 degrees, partly cloudy skies, a southwest wind at 3 to 6 miles per hour. Then for tomorrow, up to 76. Scattered storms, some areas will see more rain than others. But again, as we head into later Wednesday into Thursday, That'll be a more widespread rain event, and it will be also more humid and warmer for the area. Highs in the lower 80s on Wednesday, and then notice as we head towards the end of the week, things dry out, and as of now, the weekend looking quite nice again. And again, we got to enjoy it while we could, but you mm -hmm. say there's another weekend like this coming up, right? We'll, we'll cross our fingers, but right now, yeah, next weekend's looking pretty good, too. All right, I'll hold you to it, then. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, yep. Matt. Let's still hunt NBC 26 Live at 10. Many parents in the Green Bay area have a lot to celebrate. See why today was so special for these families. Plus, a former Packer player and current Hall of Famer talks about crashing a Wisconsin wedding. See what he has to say. Thanks for staying with us. It was a special celebration for many today as dozens of families whose babies beat the odds after being born premature or were in intensive care got together at Aurora Baycare Medical Center. This is the 14th year they've hosted this celebration. Every year families get together with their kiddos and enjoy activities like the petting zoo, bouncy houses and taking professional pictures with their kids. Being able to, to come back here and and then just see everything and how well um, the babies are doing from being in the NICU and getting to show up our little bundle of joy. Um, yeah, it's just a great, great experience. And parents also say the event serves as a reunion for parents who've gotten to know each other throughout the years. Mr. Donald Driver! <laughs> And who could forget that couple who got a very unexpected surprise at their wedding. Former Packer Donald Driver. These newlyweds were eating dinner when Driver's tour bus pulled up. Driver says he's happy to be part of their very special day. I, I don't know. It was fun. It's, it's always great when you crash weddings. And no one expects you to be there. Uh, you know, for me to walk the bride and groom in, it, I think it made their wedding even more special than, than, than it was. All right, it's such a very pleasant surprise indeed, and thank you for spending your Sunday night with me. Stick around for Sports Rewind. Chris Barrier and Kelly Price are coming your way next.